Uh, what's up everybody another day another truck got a 2017 i believe regular cab silverado um this truck's already lowered i believe it's five inches in the front nine in the back uh, maybe six in the front it's pretty low i had to actually jack the truck up to get it on my lift to get the bed bolts out um and for a full-size truck that's just pretty low uh what we're gonna be doing on it today is let me turn this camera, turn this camera around this truck already has a reckless underbed notch in it uh, he wants to pull it out and put a reckless step notch in it the notch that we ordered for this truck it's uh it's made by reckless also and it recesses into the frame about this far and what that does is when you narrow the rear end on these trucks to put big wheels on it um it gives more room to the brake back and plate when you do a 12 wide on these trucks the brakes are right up against the uh against the notch if you do it like a, a 26 by 12 max offset puts it right here against the notch the reckless developed this notch that comes in and gives you like an extra inch of clearance very nice product um I've, I've done a couple trucks where i wish i had that notch so the plan was originally when he ordered the notch for this truck we were going to do a three link and he had some 26 by 12 intro dangerous wheels we were going to narrow the rear end and all so i got him to order this notch where i'd have more clearance uh since then i think he sold his wheels or just decided not to put the big wheels on it um so and that's cool too like i say this thing's hammered it looks good um i wish i'd have got a clip of it before i took the bed off but uh i didn't so sorry you'll get to see it whenever it's back together so we're gonna dive into this thing see if we can get this uh this notch cut out and that's gonna be fun but we're gonna get it all right I ain't gonna show y'all every little step because I've showed it to you before, but I'll show you uh, the important stuff so you can install one of these yourself if you want to. Just give you a little info on what all goes into this. Man, I've been here like an hour. I finally got that old notch cut out. It's uh, I do was welded in there. I punched through the frame there with an air chisel, but it's off. On to the next step wire wheel shop towel a little bit of brake cleaner goes a long way on these frames i hate this undercoating it's such a pain but i figured out if you take a wire wheel you get the majority of it off take a rag spray it with brake cleaner the rest of it will just wipe off so it's a nice bare metal easy to work with grind this junk up Be back so with you can see the thickness difference of this notch I just want to come in just a little bit, but I've got this marked out so that I can put the front of this uh, frame out here where I can recess this down in. And I just uh, found my center point, found my center point, lined them up, marked it out, and uh, I'm gonna cut that guy out, recess this down into the frame. And I'll be back in just a second to show you what that looks like. All right, so first test fit, the cuts are right for the notch to go down in the frame, but I didn't cut it quite back far enough. Um, sitting on top of the top of the frame, but I didn't cut quite enough for it to go over. So I'm just gonna go back and uh, take a little bit more off the inside and uh, should slide right down in there. All right, uh, cut it a little more. Let's see if it fits this time. Do a little bit more. 
and that fits but you see how it tapers you got to come in and take a little bit more off right here we got back with all right let's try it one more time went in cut a little bit more off of that that's going to get cut out regardless so it don't really matter what them cuts look like as long as it's got room Bet I cut enough this time. Hey, this is just showing y'all. All these people online that, that show you these installs, including myself, they don't always go right the first time. So I'm gonna trim a little bit more and I'll come back once I get it fitting. Um, you can tell it takes a little time. So y'all bear with me. All right, so I got this thing fitting finally. Uh, this right here, it's gotta come in a little bit. So I cut a little bit too much off. I'll show you. You know, it, it don't always go perfect. So I can weld that gap up, that's no problem. Um, then we're gonna lay a weld here. There's some plates to go in here. Weld here and here on the back side. And uh, that, that's about it for the notch. And then cut the center out and weld the bottom plates in. But uh, I just wanna show you, like, they, they don't always go perfect. There's a, I don't know, 3 16ths of a gap, right? 3 16ths of an inch gap right there that I gotta weld up, which is, no big deal. But I'm gonna get this guy tacked in and I'll show you in just a second. All right, so what I did here is I found me a piece of metal put across the frame, put some clamps on there so I could pull the backside up tight against the frame on both sides. Kind of hard to see. My gimbal ain't working with me. Um, got all that tacked up real good. About to take the clamps off, uh, put a couple beads on it, and then start mocking up my end plates right here. And then once I get those mocked up, there's a little bit of piece of the bottom of the frame there I got to trim off that'll go away and then weld it out fully and then cut the center out and put the bottom plates in. All right, so started welding on this guy. I got these end pieces tacked in. Uh, just grabbed me a piece of scrap metal out of the bin, tacked to it. And uh, this one fit like really nice. This one was actually out a little bit too much. And I clamped that so it would be pulled this way. And it, it's like the notch is actually too far out this way. But it's all right. It gives me a nice little spot to weld right there. And it's going to do its job. So. Be back with you whenever I uh, get it all welded out. And then we'll cut the center section out. Put the lower plates in. And uh, it's about a wrap on this side. All right. So I got the plates welded out. Got the bottom trim back right here, close to the weld. Got both sides welded. You can see how much narrower it makes the frame. I wish somebody made a kit like this for that box Chevy working on right there. In the last video, we made it a lot easier. I got <laughs> I got about an hour and a half in this, and I got two days in that. So, um, but. 
Backside's welded. About to go in here and find the bottom plates. Get those tacked on, get them welded out. And what we were saying about this notch is when you narrow this rear end, this backing plate it gets really close to that if you're trying to run a 12 or 14 wide wheel. Um, the last one of these I've done, it's been a couple years. Uh, this, the brake caliper, I actually had to rotate it to the bottom and it went up in the notch. Um, and I had this backing plate all the way up against the the notch and I did not have a narrowed notch. So the backing plate, I mean, it was tight, tight. So it serves its purpose and does a good job at it. I'll be back with you in just a minute to show you the bottom plates. All right, so I got the bottom plates tacked in. These fit far, far better than the ones extensive sends. The last extensive notch I done, they didn't fit worth a crap. Uh, one of them was way too short. The other one was long. The center one was too short. Just, just didn't fit. These are like freaking perfect. Good job, Reckless. Every time I get a product from y'all, it's like flawless. All right, lower plates are welded in. Everything is welded, minus the very bottom of the backside. I'm gonna do that when I get it up in the air on the lift, and that'll be it for the notches. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut this other side out and get it in. I'm not gonna film that because I just showed you how to do it on this side. That side's the exact same, just backwards. Um, and when I come back, I'll start doing the shot relocation bracket. All right, so after a few hours, I got that notch welded in. Get back over here. They can still see you. All right, so the reckless shot relocation kit comes with this bar, inch and a half DOM. Uh, it comes with these lower brackets. If you've ever set up shocks for drag racing, you, you know those brackets well. Um, got a pair of those, and then I've got four upper shock tabs right there. And I tack this in. I don't know if I'm gonna have to move it forward or backwards. I just kind of put it on the corners and I'm gonna try it. And uh, I'll be back with you to show you the progress in just a second. You get the gist of how this shock bracket works. It's adjustable up and down. I've got it on the second hole down, probably gonna collapse it a little bit more. Um, but this truck, I've got the weight on the suspension now, but once you add the bed and, and all the other stuff, uh, it's gonna probably go down another inch and a half. So I wanna collapse that shock a little bit more because it's uh, almost fully extended right there. And uh, I don't want when it hits a bump to, for it to max out upwards. So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, a little bit of upper travel on the bottom. That way it's got a little bit more stroke up and down. Um, so fishing to assemble this side, get it mocked up, measure it out, make sure it matches that side. And uh, really, really nice kit, man. It Stuck it up at your rear end, stuck my digital angle finder right there, set my angle, set that side to match, and that's it. I mean, got it tack welded. Uh, once I get everything mocked up, I roll up under there, lay a bead on it, and uh, Weld these uh, top mounts out, weld the tube up. It's done, man, super simple. Also right here, I'm gonna take that shock loose. I got to relocate that brake line to the notch, um, weld it back on. Uh, I'll do that after I get everything mocked up with the shock and clean those wires up, get them where they're not gonna hit the rear end. Uh, also, part number on the shocks, these are Beltec Street Performance shocks, part number 2210FF. This is the shocks that come with their Beltec 4.7 drop when you buy one. Uh, this is the rear shocks that come with it. These are made for a truck that's lowered, uh, I believe five to seven inches or something like that in the back. Uh, they work great for that, uh, but they're at a pretty steep angle. So this kit gets them standing straight up. Supposedly, I've always heard my whole life they work better standing straight up, especially in drag racing. Uh, your shock torque better standing straight up. That's why all your coil overs you see, um, you know, straight up and down. So I don't know if it's true or not, but that's just what I heard my whole life. All right, so I know it's kind of hard to tell what's going on there because everything kind of blends together, but um, got the shocks tack welded in. Everything's tack welded for the shocks, relocation brackets. Uh, got to weld this pipe in and mount that brake line and the suspension is done so, this truck i also have to do wheel tubs in the bed um but they're not here yet 
So I just ordered a 36 inch trailer fenders and I'm gonna build the sides. And I actually don't know if we're putting a dog house in there or if we're leaving it open. That right there looks pretty killer. I'd probably just leave it open, but you know, it's whatever the customer wants, so. Um, all right, I'm gonna weld this out. I'll get back with you. All right, so Jose's over here hanging out with me tonight. Got the shock brackets all welded out. Got the brake line bracket relocated. Just put it right up under the bar there. Brake line's barely cleared the shock, but tucked up. Looks nice and neat. There's the shocks relocated. Really nice setup, what you think? Like it? All right. And that's a wrap. We're gonna pull the shocks off, paint everything black, put the shocks back on, tighten all the bolts, cut a hole in the bed, and I showed you how to do that, so I'm not gonna show you again, and stick her on.